live streaming live at www.ecctv.org. And also, you can view our archives at Every Creature Commission TV on our very own YouTube channel. We now present the On Fire Meeting. Yes, and we're now going over to the general election results. And here she is, the results of the general election, one of God's elect, Lindsay Griffiths. Hello, good afternoon and welcome, dear viewers and listeners. And here are the results of the general election. Results are actually in Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Hallelujah. Did you know that? Yes. Let's just reestablish that today. And welcome to the On Fire Meeting. Hey. Hey. Anything can happen in the next Half hour. Two hours, three Half hours. Half hours. Or three hours. Yes. So be prepared. Be prepared. Eat your heart out, Thunderbirds. This is where it's all at today. It's Lindsay Griffiths. I'm your presenter. And I have lots to say to you today because the Lord is speaking. He never stops, really. We just have to listen, don't we? Yes. Welcome. He is our protector, our provider, and our rock. And this is a lovely old hymn to start with. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. Is Jesus my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me? He hideth my soul in the cleft of the road where rivers of pleasure I see.
His wonderful love, it says. He covers us with his hand because God is love. He is love. It's not just he does love. You see, all the songs of the great revival hymns of Wales, you know that Wales is known as the land of song. You know there wasn't just one Welsh revival, the 1904-1905 revival, but dozens and dozens of revivals before then. Think about the hymns that came out of these revivals and were sung during these revivals. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. Vast, unmeasured, boundless, free, flowing as a mighty ocean in its fullness over me. Underneath me, all around me, is the current of thy love. Leading onwards, leading homeward, to thy glorious rest above. Here is love vast as the ocean, loving kindness like the flood. When the Prince of Life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood that is love think of John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that's Jesus that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and there's so many more verses on the love of God. Hallelujah. And God has actually put it on my heart this afternoon to share a few verses of Scripture with you shortly from 1 Corinthians 13. But it's got a very serious aspect which has maybe not been talked about very much. Everybody's used to hearing those verses if they do hear them. Perhaps at a wedding ceremony in church, that's one of the favorite passages, but that is only the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more in this about the love of Christ. But let's just sing and think about Jesus as we sing this wonderful song, Tell Me, the story of Jesus.
Love paid the ransom for me. And that is what's in that passage now. 1 Corinthians 13. And this is what we need to realize. That without Jesus, without his love, we are nothing. We are here Thank you. to show the love of Jesus. To shed it abroad in the words of the scripture, in our hearts, because God is love. So if we don't show forth his love, his sacrificial, unconditional, agape love, sometimes in the Bible called charity, then we are useless to him and to the world. Because you see, for anybody to get to know Jesus, and I speak from personal experience from my own testimony here. First, he draws us. I'm talking about unsaved people, people who don't know Jesus, because we all need him. He draws us first by his loving kindness, which is better than life, it says in the scriptures. And then comes the conviction of sin and the tears of re genuine repentance and the experience of salvation being born again from above but first he draws us 
In 1 Corinthians 13, it speaks of this. And you know, this is what's happening in so many churches and with so many of individuals today. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, that's the love of Christ Jesus, have not God, in other words, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, which is a great gift, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, that's a lot to have. But it says in verse 2, and have not charity, have not the love of God in us. I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Isn't that what's happening today? You see, if people don't see the reality of God's love, if they don't see it in those of us who are believers and they don't see it in churches, even with all these wonderful spiritual gifts, even with all that knowledge, even with good works it talks about, even offering yourself to die it talks about. But if that love of God isn't there, it's worth nothing. And this is what draws people to Jesus, is the loving kindness of God, the love. That's what draws people. Not mushy love that lets people away with any sin, that's let them do anything. That's actually the devil that does that, who says, do what thou wilt shall be the law. That's actually what Satan is saying. You can do anything. It doesn't matter. That's what they say. Not at all. You see, Jesus died, the pure Lamb of God. He was sent to take away the sin of the world. He's not saying there isn't any sin. He died for all our sins. And that's why I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost. And when time has surrendered, and yet he's Cross. 
a friend of mine love held him there on that cross he stayed there through love God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son Jesus to die for us and again to rise from the dead he said in Revelation chapter 1, I am he that liveth, that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of death and hell. That's what he said. What a triumph. So you see, that's the characteristics of charity, the love of God, the love of God. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4 says, Charity suffereth long, it's long suffering, and is kind. Charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. But to finish with, the last verse, verse 13 says, And now abideth faith, hope, charity. But the greatest of these is charity. You see, as the great apostle of faith, Smith Wigglesworth, said, we mustn't seek healing. We do not do that. We seek the healer. You see, when we just seek the signs and wonders, when we just seek the gifts, we're just going on an ego trip. It's the giver of the gifts, Jesus, who we need to seek. He must have the preeminence in all things. He must have. Now, people are going after many times in the charismatic world now. People are going after the lusts of the flesh. They're going on ego trips looking for the gifts. They're looking for deliverance instead of the deliverer. They're looking for healing instead of the healer. They're looking for me, me, me. And what God can do for me instead what I can do for God. And where there isn't love of God, where there isn't love showing through each individual believer, people are not drawn truthfully to God. What they're being drawn to is the lusts of the flesh and selfish ambition. Oh, you know, I can speak in tongues. Why can't you? You know, and all this stuff. Selfish ambition. 
And this is a challenge today to show forth the reality of Jesus. Let him shine through us. Those of us who are believers, in other words, be empty vessels. It all sounds difficult, but it's not. It's simple, really. Because without that reality, people will never get saved. People will go to an eternity in hell because they don't know, they don't see that love. Now, there are many kinds of love. And you've probably had teaching on this before many, many viewers and listeners. You know there's Greek words for love. There are four Greek words for love. But there's only one perfect love which God is, because that's agape, because it's love. God is love. There are many other kinds of love. There's philia, friendship love. There's eros, sexual love. There's storge, philia is that brother and sister love. There's storge, mother or father love for a child. But agape is the only one that draws people. The reality of his love. I'll never forget how I was drawn many years ago in South Africa when I was actually traveling on my own between uh, the Karoo after, well, I was sort of with just a couple of friends actually. But, but everywhere I went, I kept meeting this reality of people who showed forth Jesus. And I suddenly found, you know, and I was quite a hardened sinner, if you like. I suddenly found that I was crying. And I said, they've got something I do. I need and I want. They've got this wonderful love. Why are they loving me like this? I don't deserve this. It was wonderful, you know. It's just a drawing. That's his loving kindness, which is better than drawing us by his Holy Spirit until we come to the point where I was then confronted in Cape Town by a dear lady who, who was there. Uh, standing beside me on a, on a tourist walk, a lady who lived there and she said why did you ask me about this church are you a Christian are you born again and I, you know when she confronted me with that challenge I realized I was just totally convicted of sin but without being drawn by that love a love of Christ I would never have got to that point where the Holy Spirit could move on me and actually convict me of that sin you know, and I cried tears and tears and tears and tears of repentance. Like, you know, and then it's just amazing how you change. We can't do it. It has to be God that changes us. We can't do it. We just have to repent and be willing for Him to lead us. That's why the church has to have real agape love. Not all this mushy, mushy Huggy, huggy, a charismatic, you know, all the rest of it, you know, and everything's okay. It doesn't matter what you've done, you know. There's no such thing as sin and there's no such thing as hell and just let's be happy, clappy. I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being happy and praising the Lord and clapping hands. Not at all. But it's the motives of the heart that God looks at. He looks at the heart, you see. He looks at the heart. Amen. Yeah, that's... You see, we need to see all this. It's a deep message, this. But it's a deep message. Let's just look at how he draws us with his loving kindness. Think back. Those of you who know Jesus as your personal Savior, think about the reality of him seen through the empty vessels of his people on earth. And compare it with the false, dead religion that you see so much of, sadly, in churches and individual believers as well. Amen. Because whoever we are and whatever we've done, we need to face an eternity after this life, either with God or without God. And to finish with, before the next part of the program, I'd like to sing for you a wonderful song about heaven. Come look for me. Jasper walls and golden 
the law mm -hmm. but now it's time Lindsay for our commercial break mm -hmm. hello viewers yes indeed 30 years ago this is David Griffiths this is my wife Lindsay who has just been singing 30 years ago we thought that church was for married couples that is a man and a woman but now with new translations we have the injunction against homosexual marriages removed in the new king james referring to catamites that is pedophiles instead of homosexuals <laughs> so we now everybody we have a new situation oh isn't this exciting everyone <laughs> we have Pastor Rick Warren from the Fuller Seminary, a student of Peter Wagner, holding hands with none other than Elton John. Whoa. Don't go breaking my heart. Oh, yes, we have marriage between man and man. But 30 years ago, it was one man, one woman. Mm. Will you say I do? To supporting traditional marriage or is the emerging church going to have its way all of the time isn't that a wonderful commercial break isn't it you see how it all hangs on the true word of God you see and what's happened to the true word of God? Praise the Lord. Lindsay, Lindsay, they had married this woman again and again. Me too, and, dear. And again, and yeah. again, and again, and again, and again, <laughs> and again, and again. What happened in our marriage was the minister began, he said, barely bewildered. Was that <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, two submissions, one knockout to decide the winner. But over 30 years, we've had a lot of fun. A lot been. of battlegrounds, but a lot of fun. Hello, everybody. Welcome to ECC TV. And we are excited today because our theme is trouble. How many of you love trouble? Hallelujah. <laughs> Margaret's here, Marjorie's here, Lindsay's here. We're going to talk about trouble. The Christian life 
can be a real battleground. That's why we're given the full armor of God, Amen. the belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace, helmets of salvation, the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit. And we're going back in time today when Assyria was really winding everybody up. You say, back in time? Well, I'm telling you, you can say today that that part of the world is a battleground, is a trouble place, but we're going back to the days of Nahum. So let's come to the Nahum, the book of Nahum, chapter 1 and verse 7, our opening text today. Welcome to ECC TV. If you just joined us, this is the On Fire Meeting, which you can also pick up on our YouTube channel, Every Creature Commission TV. And look out for the revamp coming up shortly of our Bible College uh, website, which is www.biblecollegeofwalescontinuing.org. You'll be able to read of all our new courses, the African Diploma, the Asian Diploma, the UK and USA Diploma, the International Diploma, degree courses too. All of our courses, everyone, are free. So please enroll as a student. Go to Bible College of Wales Continuing dot org nahum chapter 1 verse 7 the lord is good a stronghold in the day of trouble and he knoweth them the trust in him in other words this lord of ours knows those who are going through the battleground he never leaves us or forsakes us. Lindsay sings a song, the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. So we have today the glory of the Lord upon us, for we continuously walk in days of trouble. So what do we do about this? Well, Paul ministers into this situation for there's a glory and a power on those who have not compromised to the system <clears throat> there is i'll say that again a glory and a power upon those who have not compromised to the system mm. we are in the world and not of us and if we are walking as the true warriors of Christ Jesus, then trouble will beset us wherever we go. But we have just read from Nahum about this Lord of ours, that he will not forsake us. He is there on the day of trouble. So Paul, ministering to the Corinthians, who had gone out of the way of the true walk, the Christian walk, he starts to minister into situations, for he is still writing to the church, and this message which he gave to the Corinthians is just as relevant today. And he says this, verse 1, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Unless there was trouble around his ministry, he would not be saying these words. Because fainting not, the whole world can go mad around us. But the glory of the Lord. The power of the Lord is upon us that we stand firm in the might of the Lord's armor to fulfill the purposes of God that whatever comes against this ministry, your ministry, your life, your family, we faint not. Hallelujah. Bring it on. 
We have renounced, and this is the key, the hidden things. Yes. We continuously expose the hidden things. Mm -hmm. The young people of today talk of conspiracy theories. We don't deal with the theory, for we bring the hidden things out into the light. Amen. Now, those who have attacked this ministry need to know, all you accuse us of will go on the internet in your name. All you accuse us of will go on the internet in your name. For that which you say behind the scenes, we will publicize to the world. Our role is to bring the darkness into the light. And our role, accusers, is to say that your hidden works of dishonesty, that is that which you say against the people of God, shall be brought into the light and explode and, ex and expose for what it is. For the word declares we're not to walk in craftiness, that is behind the scenes, plotting. We discovered a whole conspiracy against this ministry. We told everybody about it. We will not, as we just heard in our commercial break, handle the word of God deceitfully. This is going on all of the time. Words being changed from the true word of God. Injunctions being taken out from the true word of God so that the narrow road be made wide as we have with the emerging church. But, says Paul, by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, our ministry must be the most open and transparent ministry there is, yet they still plot behind the scenes against us. And we will continuously expose this. For if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. For, and this is what we face every day, the devil has placed a blinding on Western countries to think that sin is good and good is sin. Sin is good and good is sin. It won't work. Sin has always been sin. And good has always been good. And sinful nature in the man, as on the Maynard James programs we live stream every uh, Wednesday at 11 o'clock UK time. Maynard James talks about the sanctifying power of the blood of Jesus completely removing the sin nature of man. This old-fashioned word needs to be preached time after time after time again that the glory of the Lord may come upon the saints of God. We'll be dealing with that in just a moment when we come to the empty vessel. But we have a God of this world operating in this world time after time after time again, infiltrating the parliaments of this world. So false laws are being passed day after day after day after day after day. For this God of this world is blinding people to think that which is of sin is good. That which is good is sin. But we are bringing all this. And shortly our ministry is bringing out the Constitution Keeper's website. You'll see it on there. We are bringing ourselves into position so that the light of the gospel may be realized amongst those who have been blinded by the God of this world. How are we going to do that? Well, the way we're going to do it is going to freak out the devil. 
The devil looks to play on pride. And these big ministries, like we've been exposing, operate through pride. Oh, we do this, we do that, we do these good works, we do all sorts of things. We're friendly and show love to everybody and accept their sin. For the wide road is now what is in the preeminent position. The narrow road is something of the past. But how are we going to overcome remnants of God? How are the Elijahs going to come out of that cave, having been fed by ravens? How are we going to face these present-day prophets of Baal? How are we going to bring the glory of, of the Lord upon Western nations which have turned away from God? How are we to achieve all this? It's in the next verse. We achieve all this by preaching not ourselves, by being the empty vessel, by coming towards the camera, not with notes of man, but the glory of the Lord within us, that that which we have learned and studied over the years is brought back by the Holy Ghost as a sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of Almighty God, that the glory comes, the power comes, the anointing comes, that that which we say is bound is bound, that which we say is loose is loose for this is the army of the Lord standing up preaching the word of God yet not ourselves but him for God didn't we read that he is the stronghold in times of trouble in Nahum and what's interesting about Nahum the trouble spot of the world at that time was Assyria. Where is the trouble spot of the world today? Assyria. Where is ISIS operating from? Assyria. So this world is relevant today. And who was Paul writing to? The Corinthians. The Corinthians who had let sexual immorality into the church what has happened to the charismatic world revival after revival after revival of the charismatics ends up in nuki nuki amongst the ministers oh yes Cumbran Lakeland name it Charismatic ministry after charismatic ministry. White swapping. The immorality of Corinth is alive today in what's known as the charismatic church. So Paul was writing to an immoral group of people. Nahum was ministering at a time when Assyria was the trouble spot of the world. The word of God in these days was being handled deceitfully. So when we start realizing as the Spirit gives the revelation of the word, the understanding comes, this is the same situation. And the same principles apply. For God, verse 6, now this is how we are handling the trouble. By bringing the darkness into the light. Recently we had the BBC issue an edict against us of all kinds of false information. We told everybody. We told them, go ahead. Broadcast this false information and we will sue you. Because they're not brothers. If they kept to their charter, they would be brothers. The amount of immorality coming out of the BBC over the years is one that made Sodom and Gomorrah look like a kindergarten. 
So we're dealing with accusers who have immoral records. But God has given us the power to be able to overcome every attack of the enemy. How do we do it? God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness. You see what we're facing in European countries, in Western countries today, is a blindness the devil has placed upon them that they think that the bad things are good and the good things are bad. So they attack those of the good thinking that their bad is the high moral position. For God, for God, you see what happened at Nahum in the time of the trouble with Assyria? God is the all-powerful one. And God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, what is he going to do today? Has shined in our hearts to give the light of the glory of God. So at the time of the utmost trial, so the word of God comes out of the Lord's anointing, out of the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God to bind every move of the enemy. No wonder Paul said we're troubled on every side. That's what he says. Isn't that right in verse 8? We are troubled on every side. But in, um, in, in the midst of that, a serious asses. The country turn away from God, government after government, passing immoral laws, the slaughter of babies, the coming together of strange flesh. All that is going on. But God has commanded the light to shine out of the sun. His glory is here upon the anointed of the Lord. Now, We, verse 7, have this treasure. What treasure? The knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The face of the Lord is within those who are born again and sanctified by the blood of Jesus. His face. And no evil can dare face his face. And his face is upon all those anointed of God. His face is within all those who are born again, the temples of the Holy Ghost, that in this time of trouble, on every side, there is such a power and anointing upon the children of God who have this treasure, this treasure of God in earthen vessels. Why? So that the excellency of the power may be of God. So girls, I'm facing the girls, everyone. That's Margaret, Marjorie, and Lindsay. Girls, we're troubled on every side. Perplexed on every side. But we're not in despair. Why are we not in despair? We have the face of the Lord. This treasure in this earthen vessel not forsaken yes we're persecuted every day we're persecuted every day attack after attack after attack after attack comes upon us but we're not forsaken he never leaves us nor forsakes us there are times we're cast down, weeping and crying in our beds, but we're not destroyed. Why are we not destroyed? Because we're bearing about in our very bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus. Oh, I said to Lindsay, as she goes deeper into sorting out the education of Wales. 
I'm saying to her, we need the wisdom of God. I said, let all the other sides have their way, have their propaganda hit on the students of this land. But no, no philosophy, no sexual practice. No activity of sin can come near the fact that Jesus died for the sinner. You see, all the publications of sin, let them have them. But alongside those publications, let them have the Savior who died. For out of this darkness will come the light of the world. And that he will draw all men unto him. That there will be a realization. The blindness will be removed. And we say to them, yes, hand out all your publicity material from whatever source you want to bring it. But let's have alongside the ministry of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ of a Savior who died and rose again. For in the believer is the dying of the Lord Jesus. Why? So that the life of Jesus might be made manifest. All these philosophies, all these sexual practices are nothing to the body of of Christ we might be perplexed we might be persecuted we might be troubled on every side but rising up from the grave is this mighty army in resurrection power full of the glory of the Lord that the anointing of God is upon us so that the blindness be removed and the understanding be given that Jesus Christ is Lord. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. We're always brought to the point of realization that it's not us but him. So that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest where? In our mortal flesh. Oh. Glory. Oh, Father, we're praising you today in the name of Jesus. That whatsoever we shall bind on earth is bound in the heavenly realm. Whatsoever we shall loose on earth is loosed in the heavenly realm. That even though we are troubled and perplexed on every side and all kinds of accusers say false things against us, for your sake, your name, and the gospel, that we always carry in ourselves the dying of the Lord Jesus, that we rise up, we rise up, we rise up in such a glory that man cannot stand the very sight of us, for in our body is the very face of the Lord Jesus, and sin cannot conquer his name. I'm taking you now to the glory of the Lord. This glory is so wonderful. You know, when we start understanding the glory of God is the time that we know that we are not of ourselves. We are of his glory, of his manifestation, of his anointing of his power, of his understanding, of his magnificence, of his anointing to such a degree that we, out of this attack, out of this trouble, out of this being perplexed on every side, 
out of this attack from family and from home environments, from business environments, from political environments, from wherever it comes, even from the so-called church environments, that these attacks which come and trouble us day after day after day after day after day brings the body to the end of itself that the dying of the Lord Jesus is manifest in us but not only the dying for from the depths of despair like Paul said in Romans 7 O wretched man that I am he said comes the understanding of that Galatians 2.20 reality. That we live, yet not I. Mm -hmm. We are crucified with Christ. For within this context, from within this understanding, comes the resurrection. Comes this being risen up from the depths of despair. Paul moving from being the wretched man that he was. To no longer living but being the empty vessel to manifest the face of Christ. And to conclude. As Lindsay gets ready to sing once more the wonderful hymn. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. We gain the understanding of what Peter was saying in his second epistle. He said this, given unto us. Who are the us? Those who carry the treasure in their earthen vessels. Those who carry the dying of the Lord Jesus. Yet not only that, they're being risen from the depths of despair to resurrection glory and anointing and power and being able to overcome the trouble which is coming at us from every side. For according to his divine power, with this we finish, he hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. For around us is the corruption, the trouble in this world. For through the process we describe today, we have escaped the corruption in the world through lust by being diligent, by being temperance, by being patient, by understanding that the darkness has to give way to the light. Lindsay, come Amen. forward. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. For we carry within ourselves the dying of the Lord Jesus. Come, come so everyone can see you, my dear Lindsay. We carry within ourselves the dying of the Lord Jesus. And from that dying, we're risen with him to walk the heavenly places. We move in his glory. That even though we be troubled on every side, perplexed even, we are more than conquerors. That from the grave we arise with him to bring the glory of the Lord into every situation. Yes. In his name. Amen. Amen. It's a wonderful message of triumph there. From David. Hallelujah. A wonderful. And he knows. Praise you, his. Lord. God knows who are his. Hallelujah. And the sheep know his voice. Hallelujah. And here it is. Hallelujah. Not yet, Lindsay. Not I'm yet still then. putting it on. He's Here it is. <laughs> I believe in a hill, viewers. I, I do the control He's the panels as well. And the the flight controller and Hallelujah. all the tower and all the rest the Lord. Of it. But what's important is we believe in this hill called Mount Calvary. 
that from the grave we arise mm. in resurrection power resurrection glory in the anointing of God we give Jesus all the praise I believe in our hill Thank you for Thank joining, you us joining us on the On Fire on meeting fire. today. We give Jesus all the praise and all the glory. So it's goodbye from Lindsay. Bye. Hallelujah. And it's goodbye too for Marjorie and Marcus who've been with us in the studio. Join us next this coming Wednesday at 11 o'clock for Maynard James, Holiness Preacher on Fire. Thank you all for joining us today. God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.